Hello, hello, this is Brian with Simcoe Survival and the camera's set a little bit differently today because I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a survival fly uh, for fishing using just a hook and your paracord. Now, you will need a couple of tools for this, both of which you should always carry with you anyway. Well, one of which you should carry with you anyway, the other one you can just find anywhere you want. But first tool is going to be a uh, multi-tool. Now, you're going to need this because it just makes life easier. Now, I use this tool primarily. The only real tool I use for this is going to be the scissors. Um, that's for trimming up my fly components. But you can use a knife if you um, if you have one or you know if you're careful with it. You just want to make sure that you get a nice even cut. So I find the scissors makes that a lot easier. But let's go ahead and get down to the point here. First thing you're going to need is a stick. It can be any kind of stick. It doesn't really care. I don't care. Stick. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your hook. Now remember, rule of thumb with survival, uh, setting up any kind of survival kit, smaller hooks are better. It is easier to catch a big fish on a small hook than a small fish on a big hook. So I tend to carry, as my standard size, a size 6 hook. Um, now you can use a panfish hook or you can use a bait ho holder hook, or you can use any kind of hook you want. Um, I tend to find the um, eagle claw hooks to be better. I like the ones that are offset. I don't know if you guys can see that. You see how it pokes out there? How the, the actual hook part is bent? I like that. It makes it a lot easier to catch your fish. Now, um, as far as tying flies go, I'm going to be doing it with paracord. All the components that I'm going to use to tie this fly is going to come straight from that paracord. Um, paracord is one of those things everyone should be carrying with them. It is a survival standard and while I do prefer using tarred bank line for tying things and, and um, long term projects that I'm going to be keeping for a long period of time, I do still use paracord for quite a few things and this would be an example of one of them. So basically I'm going to be tying, now you can use, I'm going to tie two different flies on this video so it may take, you know this video is going to be a little bit longer but um, I'm going to be tying one fly that I know works really, really well. Um, it's a grub fly. The particular pond I'm going to be fishing in and demonstrating this for you, they love grubs. I mean, they go ballistic over them. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a grub fly um, because I know that the fish where I'm going to be tend to prefer that style. And then I'm going to build a, um, or make a smaller nymph fly um, using the same kind of hook. And... Uh, so it's going to be a little larger than your standard nymph. But that one has also been successful. Um, but it's just a tr standard nymph. Nothing too complicated or over the top. So let me go ahead and we'll go ahead and get started with this. And I'll show you how to, how to kind of do everything. Now my paracord decided it wanted to run away from me. So let me grab that really quick. Paracord. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut about 18 inches. And you're going to need that if you're going to be making a fly because believe it or not you could use a four inch strip paracord for all the other material that you need but there's one specific piece of cord that you need to tie and you need about 18 inches of it so unfortunately you do have to cut a full strip off of your paracord uh, that's the only drawback I find now I prefer when doing this particular kind of project to use the tough grid that's this one here paracord because it has a marking strand that I find to be fairly unique um, among mill spec paracords and as you can see it is very thin um, which makes it perfect to use as my substrate for my fly now I'm not gonna eat for those of you who tie flies and everything else I am NOT gonna be using proper fly terminology this is a video for pretty much everybody not just people who make flies so I'm going to be using my own terminology so that hopefully everyone can understand it a little bit better. Um, so there you go. Now in this particular case I'm starting out with the grub fly. So what you have here is you have your stick and this is going to be your clamp. Um, you need a clamp when tying flies. It just makes life a hundred times easier. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a piece of our internal strand here. Now I've already taken and made a slit in this stick. 
And what I'm going to do, because I'm tying a grub, I'm going to tie it closer up here towards the belly of the hook. I'm going to take the eyelet section, I'm going to stick it into my slit, just like this. So that it holds on. And then, but unfortunately, it's still loose. So, what I'm going to do at this stage, is I'm going to take a piece of my guts, I'm going to form a little loop here, I'm going to take my stick, and right around the top, see if I can do this and show it to you here, right around the top, I'm going to wrap it around like this, above the hook, pull it through, just like that, so that it forms that little loop. Move it up a little bit. And then I'm going to wrap it back on itself, pulling very tightly. Wrap it a few times. See if I can show you here. Stick your finger through like that on the final wrap. And just tuck the remaining piece of cordage down through that little section. And what that's going to do, this is going to tighten everything up and keep it nice and tight. And as you can see, it's tight. So, there we are. Now, I'm going to have a hard time showing you as I'm making this because of how you know small this is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the steps as best I can. So, bear with me a little bit. So right here, we have our baseline. Basically, I don't know exactly what a fly uh, producer would call it, but it's basically the portion that I'm going to be using to build the foundation for where everything else is going to go. I find this actually grips very, very well to the um, actual hook and provides a nice solid foundation for the rest of the building. All right, so let's just wrap this around a little bit. Ah, I hate doing belly. It makes it very, very hard to do. All right. Let's go ahead. We got this wrapped around a few times here. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Now what I need to do is come back up this way. And just keep wrapping and wrapping. Now hopefully you guys are going to be able to see it. But basically what I did here, let me see if I can get it to focus for you. Focus. There you are. Do you see how I wrapped it around the hook? That's basically where I'm going to have my, um, my grub that I'm going to make out of the next piece of cordage. And that just allows it to stick on the hook and not slide around too much. So what you're doing is you're basically just adding a really tight base layer using the, the uh, marking strand to allow the rest of your cords to sit there and not slide off the hook. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a bunch of our core pieces. Um, I find it a lot easier if you just cut them into more manageable sections because these are going to be significantly longer than you need. So I just like to kind of snip them a little bit and make them a little bit shorter here. There we go. Alright. So as you can see, just cut them, made them a little bit shorter. They don't have to be exact because you're going to be cutting them again. But basically, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to cut a couple more of these. Because remember, we're making grub, so we want it to look kind of fat. So we're going to just clip off some more pieces here. And we're going to start tying these on now. Full disclosure, I am not a fly manufacturer. Um, this is something that I've practiced at home and found that works well when trying to use bare minimum materials, you know, 
when basically when you're trying to fish and you don't have anything to fish with because fish don't like to bite hooks with nothing on them. So I just sat down and figured, well, what if I came up with an interesting way to actually create my own bait using something I might have in my kit already and paracord looked like an interesting way to do it. So I looked up how to build flies, practiced a bit, came up with these different, you know, a couple of different flies that I could make, tested them out and found out they work. So I decided to make a video and show you guys how to do it. So basically, you have that and you have your little strips of guts. And what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna take and you're gonna wrap one piece of the gut on there. Now this is the annoying part because it likes to turn as you're trying to wrap it. But basically, you just need to take and wrap one piece on So it's on there. Just do two wraps around it, nothing fancy. What that's gonna do is it's just gonna hold it there. Like that. And you want the long part facing off the end of the hook for the grub. So just do the little you know, little section up here and the rest of it just hanging off. So you got that. And now what we're gonna do is add another section right below it. We're just going to do the exact same thing again. Just do a little wrap around it. Alright. And you're basically, basically just going to go kind of around the hook doing that. Just these little wraps until you've got the hook surrounded in these white strings. So there we go. Just gonna wrap this a couple of times to secure it. All right. And now, what you should have should look something like this. Now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut off the vast majority of it, make it a little easier to work with. So there you go. And now basically, you're just gonna take and line up little strings I found it tends to work the best when you kind of scrunch everything up a little bit. Now I'm not going to be able to really show you this particular way of doing it because it takes both hands and I can't really show it to you very well. So I'll show you kind of in a second here. So there's your base, okay? 
Now, what I like to do is just take those little end pieces right up here that you had when you first put the, the uh, strings on. I like to just kind of fold them over the string. And fluff them up. See how they're fluffy? Hopefully you can see they're fluffy. Kind of fluff them up. There you go. So that's basically the end of where you need the clamping. Very simple little fly. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to finish it off. So what we're going to do, this is not the proper way to tie a fly just to let you guys know. What you're going to do is take a finger, hopefully you guys can see it, wrap it around like that. Wrap the string around the fly one more time, creating a loop with your finger. Pull the string through. to create a knot and you're just going to do that quite a few more times and what that'll do is it'll help secure the wrapping and uh, prevent the fly from coming apart um, now this this isn't going to last forever um, you know it, you're not using the proper types of strings you're not using the proper materials you're not gluing it to lock it you know, do, using lock, uh, knot locks, and stuff like that. So this will, this fly will eventually unravel, um, but it will last through quite a few strikes. I think the last one that I used, that I made myself and I used, managed to catch me. It was over ten. It was, I think it was twelve to fourteen small bass. Um, so what I caught with it, I think it was 12 to 14. It was over 10, I remember that much. And it started, showed signs of starting to unravel, but um, one of the bastards took it. They took it from me. I was not happy. Um, so I don't know if it actually truly unraveled or not. I know that it was trying to unravel. But there you have it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my little fly out of there um, so basically I'm just gonna yank out my little fly here loosen up my bindings there we are and there's the, uh, the fly now yes it is sorry about that apparently my SD card decided to cut out on me so back to where we were we have our fly taken out of our little stick. It's a little grub fly. All I did was I uh, fluffed up the, this portion of the leftover strings over here. Um, I'm gonna do the same to these over here. Um, I just do that to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, tends to get the fish's attention a little bit better. And to do that, all we're gonna do is kind of unravel them and uh, fluff them up a bit. If I can avoid stabbing myself with the hook. Ow. Normally you can do this by just kind of twisting the tail on your fingers a little bit.
And there you are. So that's fly number one. Be right back and we'll do fly number two. Welcome back. So we have our second hook. This is gonna be fly number two. Um, this right here is the first one. It's more of a grub. Now we're gonna do more of a nymph. Um, both fly types work really well in my experience. So basically right here, we have our stick. This time we're gonna take the hook end and we're gonna put it in there. All right. So it's nice and stable. And we're gonna do the same thing again. Just gonna pull, tighten, wrap it, and then tie it off to help secure it and keep it nice and tight. All right, so there we have that, nice and tight. So we can go ahead and start making our fly. Now in this instance, once again, because I need that cord, I'm gonna cut off 18 inches of paracord here, same as before. All right, so we have our paracord strip. We're gonna separate it from the rest of the cordage, the sheath. Now in this one, we're actually gonna use the sheath. So, now we have our internal strands. In this particular instance, I'm not gonna be using them. So they're gonna go off to the side. All I need is that strand for the same reason I did before. But now, we're gonna take our sheath and we're gonna fray the sheath. Um, because these little strands are what's actually going to become the um, main of our fly. So it's going to give it the color, going to give it the texture, and going to hopefully attract fish to it. Um, so this part is of course annoying, as most of you can probably guess, because paracord sheaths are not exactly designed to come apart, but you need to, to pull them apart for this one don't need to do the whole sheath, just long enough to get the length of strings you need. That should be far enough. So as you can see, we have our little strings. And now we're just gonna go ahead and cut them off. So we have a whole bunch of different colored strings. Now I recommend using camo type paracord or even brighter, you know, colored paracord. The brighter the colors, the better for this kind of purpose. You don't wanna use a solid colored paracord because then you don't have access to you know the different colors for the, uh, the mane of your fly. But in this particular instance, um, I'm just going to do a simple little nymph so it shouldn't be anything complicated. But there you go, you have your hook. And once again, we're going to do the same exact thing we did last time. We're going to line up our piece of string here. See if I can show you with the shaft of the hook. And we're going to go ahead and wrap and create our base layer. And that base layer is what's going to keep the rest of it from coming off. It's what's going to let us build the fly securely on the hook. So it is an important part of the process. You cannot skip this part. So those of you guys who think you can just, oh, I'll just go ahead and do this or that. It's not gonna work if you don't put down the base layer. The whole thing's gonna come apart. All right. So there we go, we have our base layer down. All right. So we're gonna wrap that down there just like that, just like before, just to keep it nice and tight. And now, so we have that, we're gonna go ahead and pick out the colors we want from the sheath of our paracord. Now in this particular instance, I'm gonna be using black and the blacks, browns, and golds um, from the sheath. So I'm not gonna use the greens because this particular pond has a lot of algae in it. And I don't want it to look like the algae. I want it to look like something else, like, you know, a living bug. So I'm gonna be choosing 
the colors from the cordage that's going to actually give it that kind of look. <clears throat> and I might even add a little bit of white on there just to just for shiggles just to um, add another color so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that just to make it stand out a little bit more add a few strands of the white on, on it as well here I haven't done this yet with this one I've never used white on the nymph so we'll experiment together one of my white strands blew away If you can't tell, the wind is fairly strong. Where'd it go? Huh. Anyway, so there we go. We have our different colors. We have the golds, the, the, uh, the white, the black. So what we're gonna do now, <clears throat> we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it on like that. You want the excess hanging off towards the uh, head of the fly. And you're going to use the um, base portion to actually create the foot of the fly, the body, if you will. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the mane here. I'm just going to kind of wrap it around here. Try to kind of have have it going around the, the uh, hook. I'm just going to take and wrap it all the way around. All right, so at this point, you should have something that looks kind of like this. All right, as you can see, all these pieces are poking off this way. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold them all back on themselves towards this portion of the fly back here. And you're gonna leave a little bit of a hump right at the front. Uh, I wonder if you can see that. Just a little bit of a bulge at the front to act like the head of the fly. So what you do, once you've done that, is you wrap it again. Leaving that bunch right there at the front. And that's what you should have now. So now what we're going to do is the tricky part, and that's making this thing stand up. Uh, to make the main stand up, and to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of our little pieces here. And we're going to fold them over again towards the head like this. What you're gonna do is you're not gonna wrap all the way around there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take and wrap 
around behind them. So let me see if I can show this to you here. You're gonna take, you're gonna wrap behind them, not on top of them, and you're gonna pull it forward. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna poke those little main pieces up. So you don't wanna wrap over them, you wanna wrap just behind them and pull the string forward to make them kinda of stand up. So once you've done that, your fly is pretty much done for the most part. Um, with this particular one here, I'm not going to add anything else. I'm going to leave the little tendrils down here that are poking out to kind of add some fluff, some texture to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it off, same way I did before. Make sure my fly doesn't come undone here. And you just cut off your excess. All right, so let me go ahead and take this off. So now you have a semi-completed fly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and cut off the excess up here to, to make them about as long as I want them. So in that case, I want them about that long. So I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna cut them right about there. And as you can see, they stand up. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna take and fluff them. Just twist them between your fingers to fluff them up, separate all those little fibers out. And there's your finished product. Um, does it look perfect? No. But it will work. So there you have it, your fly. Now I'm going to go ahead and take you guys out to the lake. And I will show you how they work. I'll be right back. Bye bye. Alright, welcome back. And right here, we're out here at the lake to test this out. And right here we have our gnarly little grub. Um, so basically when I fish with these, I just like to take them, dip them into the water, and just kind of slowly move them back and forth, maybe bounce them on the surface a little bit. That's how I find they work the best when you're using a fly like this, because they are wet flies, they aren't going to float like a dry fly will. Um, and remember, these are survival flies, they aren't exactly the kind of thing that you're going to go prepared to fly fish. So let me just go ahead and dip this in here. 
and let's see what I can get. This isn't exactly the best time to go fishing, but sometimes I get lucky. So let's see. And in typical fashion, my wife, who's using another one of our flies that was made with paracord, just managed to catch one before I did figure that one out. Go on, hold it up. Uh, <laughs> Cut herself a little bass. Alright, well, hopefully I'll be able to catch one. All right, so finally managed to do it. After my wife caught one using a different one that we had made, um, this one right here actually, that we had made before, she managed to catch a fish, which I showed you guys a little bit earlier, using that one. The two that I just made, they decided they didn't want to bite right away. But we did manage to get one using the nymph one. And as you can see, there it is. So let me go ahead and put this guy back in the water. I'll have to do another video later on how to properly unhook a fish because a lot of people don't know how to do it. And if you do it right, you won't cause too much injury to the fish. Come on. No. I'm going to get you off. Just shush. There we go. All right. 